The team at Acer sent me another great laptop in comparison to the Spin 5 that I previously looked at. Today we're going to look at the Swift 3. Hands on Tech is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. Hey everybody, I'm Ant Pruitt and this is Hands on Tech here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. Folks, thanks for joining us each and every week here on the network. That is twit.tv slash hot. That's twit.tv slash H-O-T for hands on tech. Make sure you're subscribed in your favorite podcatcher of choice and you automatically get this show each and every Monday. Now, let's go ahead and get started with the show. Previously on Hands on Tech, I believe it was episode 99, I showed off a laptop from the folks at Acer. It was the Acer Spin 5 that was lightweight and super portable and beautiful display and it was really geared for the mobile content creator to a certain extent now today acer sent another laptop over to us it's the swift 3 again it is a small lightweight not necessarily geared for mobile content creator but it is as they put on their website engineered for mobile performance because of the uh, intel chipset that's on the inside of this thing all right. So what do you have spec wise? What do you have on the hardware side of this thing? This is a 13.5 inch display that's giving you a three to two aspect ratio. Now, I know in episode 99, some of you commented back regarding that aspect ratio because some people are just used to the 16 to nine aspect ratio. Well, you have to think about this as someone that's just doing mobile performance and not someone that's out there trying to do cinematic video or anything like that. For people that are out and about running through spreadsheets, running through sales calls or just checking databases and things of that nature, they don't necessarily need the wide aspect ratio of a 16 to nine display. Three to two is usually a bit more ideal, especially if you're staring at code and staring at rows and rows of, of, of text or, or spreadsheets. So it just makes a lot more sense. You get in this display in that aspect ratio, but it's also in a 2K resolution. So this is a step up above uh, full HD. And it's a beautiful display. I, I can't complain about that. Uh, from the other aspects of the hardware, you're going to get one Thunderbolt 3 port, which is great because it allows you to put in your USB-C devices to charge them up. You can also put in a compatible uh, display port to power an additional monitor if you need to. So if you had a at your workstation or what have you, and you don't necessarily want to use a big docking station or anything like that, you can just use one single Thunderbolt 3 port, uh, Thunderbolt 3 cord to power your nice, beautiful cinema display or anything like that. That's going to give you a larger bit of real estate to look at while you're working. I do enjoy the feel of this laptop. The keys on it are have a little bit more travel than your average laptop is. Put it right up there with the MacBook Pro uh, travel on this on these keys. It feels really good. It's backlit. My only nitpick with it is the power button is right there on top of the keyboard and it's a bit in the way. It's right right above the backspace key. And every now and then my long fingers just might tap that power button and it just sort of gives me it gives me a little bit of an uneasy feeling. I haven't had an incident of it turning off or anything like that while I was typing, but I I'd still feel a little bit more comfortable if that power button was moved to the side of the chassis and not necessarily sitting right there on top of the keyboard where it could be struck or held down some kind of way. But that's just me. My two cents on that. Overall, it is a very, very nice laptop and beautiful. It has the, uh, all of the capabilities to work with Windows 10 and the Windows Hello. So you either can use the fingerprint scanner that's integrated here on the bottom right hand side of it, not necessarily on the trackpad, but you can also integrate it with Cortana to do waking up on it by voice and things like that. I don't recommend that, but some people like to use those features. I've always thought those features of Windows 10 just sort of gotten away. So I'd rather just put in a password or just use the fingerprint scanner, which is quite good. 
This is running an Intel CPU that is a Core i7 10th gen, Core i7 that is, that's running 1.3 gigahertz quad core processor. And that's okay because you, you, if you're wanting to have a, a long battery life for a device like this, you don't necessarily want it to be running a bunch of cycles per second, uh, you know, up in the two gigahertz span and things like that. So uh, I give them that spec. And from the from my experience with using it inside of Photoshop and other things, it's been totally fine. It's not lagging or just sort of just choking to get any of the jobs done. It also comes with a, this model comes with a one terabyte uh, SSD, plenty of storage, plenty of fast storage on top of that. And it also comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Whew. Now that's beautiful. That's the kind of stuff that makes me get excited because I don't necessarily have to have RAM to check spreadsheets in general, but I do need that RAM and I do need that graphics processing when I'm looking at Photoshop and I'm looking at a bunch of different layers. Now, the graphics on this on this device, it is an integrated Iris uh, Intel Iris graphics uh, processing unit in. That's OK. I'd much rather have something discrete, like more along the lines of an NVIDIA card. They do have options for that, but not on this particular model. Now with this model, you're going to get about 15 hours of battery life. I tend to disagree with that. Uh, let, let me see if I can show you the screen here. If I'm going to get 15 hours of battery life, you should see a lot more power displayed. See right now I have 47% remaining on this battery. And what's that? That's not that's only giving me a couple of hours left, if that. So that's not necessarily 15 hours worth of battery life. I blame that on marketing. I don't know why these manufacturers will market batteries for having these super duper long battery life when it's never really realistic, especially for someone that's actually doing work, even if it's just going through text and databases and things of that nature it still uses up a lot more battery than these things are spec'd out to be. From a pricing standpoint, this model is available for right at 1100 bucks on the website. We'll put some links in the show description if, just in case you're interested. Quite frankly, I think you're going to get better options looking at some of the lower tiered models uh, because the price point is so much better. In addition to having the Core i7 CPUs, there's also the Core i5 options and Core i3 options. And if you're like me and you're a big fan of the AMD Ryzen side of things, they have AMD Ryzen 5 and AMD Ryzen 7 CPUs available for you. So if you're looking at getting a six core CPU at a much better price, that is available there. This one, again, it starts at about 1100 bucks, but I've seen several models in there starting right at about $650. Go ahead and just check out the links and you'll be able to see and to pick and choose the type of specs that are going to work for you. So that is it for this week's episode of Hands on Tech. Again, the Acer Swift 3, this is a nice device. And again, it's just something that's engineered for mobile performance, not necessarily the big time content creator, uh, powerhouse of a laptop, but it's not bad. I, I would definitely give it a try. I'm not not necessarily going to say this this particular model being the eleven hundred dollars is the way I would go. I would step it down, you know, to one of the rising sides and spend save a couple hundred bucks and still get a great value with this laptop. All right. Thank you all for watching this week's show. Uh, thank you all for supporting me and checking out my show, Hands on Photography, each and every Thursday here on the network. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and tag me on Twitter at int underscore Pruitt. All right, guys, y'all have a great day. Now, safely be well and do well. And we'll catch you next time here on Hands on Tech. Take care. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands on Tech.